Good evening. Thank you for joining us on the News at 7 on NT International. And we're live in Abuja and I'm Ruth Aguele. Let's bring you the headlines. Well, things are a bit on a low key. It's not that the status is shut down. It's just that it's on a low key, just like the rest of the country. No panic at the State House. Special advisor to the president clears the air. Prince Charles tests positive for coronavirus, just as death toll increases globally. And United Nations marks International Day of Missing and Detained Persons, flags at half-mast. Well, you may already be aware that a weekly meeting of the Federal Executive Council did not hold this Wednesday. In fact, we hear that the highest policy decision-making body of the Nigerian government will not meet until further notice. But what is the situation in the nation's seat of government as a result of, measure, as a result of measures being taken to contain the coronavirus pandemic? State House correspondent Adam Musambo will give us an update. Yes, studio, the Federal Executive Council meeting usually held here in this hallowed chamber behind me, now under lock and key, did not take place this Wednesday. And as you have said, no one can tell when the next meeting will be held. The high-powered presidential tax force on COVID-19 announced the suspension of the Federal Executive Council meeting as a precautionary measure against the spread of the global pandemic. But what happens if any major decision is to be taken that requires the approval of the council? This is the question I earlier asked the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adeshina. And this is what he had to say. Yeah, the, the, the meeting of the Federal Executive Council was suspended because of the size. You have over 50 people seated in the council chambers whenever the meeting holds and that is not advisable at a time like this but if there will be a very important decision to be taken you can always summon the relevant people three four or five and hold a small meeting and arrive at a decision. It does not mean that one man is going to be taking all the decisions. Of course, yes, there are executive decisions, but the ones that must pass through consultation and which must have the buy-in of the uh, Federal Executive Council can always be discussed at smaller meetings. So how will you describe the situation in the State House at the moment regarding presidential activities? Well, things are a bit on a low key. It's not that the State House is shut down, it's just that it's on a low key, just like the rest of the country. The rest of the country is also on low key. Um, there is partial lockdown in most parts of the country. So what is happening at the State House can also be called a partial lockdown, not a complete lockdown. So is it true that uh, a test was carried out on President Muhammad Buhari on COVID-19? Well, what, what did you hear about the result? They say it's negative. Good. So that calls for rejoicing with him. Anybody that does the test and tests negative, we rejoice with that person. And anybody that does it and tests positive, it's not a death sentence. We also would uh, uh, pray along with the person, give the person our goodwill and best wishes, and they will surely come out of it. Even the index case in Nigeria recovered and has been discharged. So. God that has shown us mercy thus far will continue to show that mercy. Anybody that tests positive is not a death sentence. They will be attended to, they will be treated, and they will be fine. There have been reports in the media that the presidency has banned some media houses from covering the president. How true is that? Banned is a wrong word. Banned is a wrong word. Anybody that uses the word ban is just operating from a mindset. And you know that Nigerians love conspiracy theories. But this one is no conspiracy at all. And there is no ban. So what really what, happened? What, what happened is that in the press gallery, you have about 108 journalists in that single hall. And it goes contrary to the spirit of the times. The times dictate that you don't have too many people congregated in one place. Imagine 108 journalists, and if one of them happens 
to, to, to catch the virus, he spreads it among all the journalists. So we said, for now, let them stay away. Not much is happening for now. Let the journalists stay away. But we picked a certain number, representative of the media. They will come in. If there is anything, they will cover. And those outside will also not miss because there will be a system in which they can share reports. So ban will be a wrong word. It, it will be uh, operating from a, a mindset of conspiracy. And there's no conspiracy here at all. So in situations like this, what, what other measures has the presidency taken towards containing the spread of COVID-19? In the country generally, you mean? In the state house. In the state house. Of course, you know that when you come into the state house, you have about three, four, five spots in which your temperature is tested and you have to sanitize your hand. And uh, if you come in and your temperature is way, way, way above a certain figure, then you will be advised to go for test and to take care of yourself. So I think so far so good. Before you get into the general area, you will meet about three areas of test. And before you get into the president's area, you meet like another two. So uh, I, I believe that a lot has been done to ensure that those who operate in the presidency are taken care of. So is there a need for panic at times like this? No, panic would not be the right thing to do. Because when you panic, you are bound to make mistakes. When you panic, you get agitated. And the situation does not call for that. Rather, it calls for cooperation with government. When they give instructions, let's abide with those instructions. And uh, uh, a, a number of things have been put in place to ensure that the well-being of Nigerians is taken care of. The presidency, Nigeria's seat of government, is not taking anything to chance regarding COVID-19. There is now serious restrictions on visitors and the staff that have to come to work, as Mr. Adeshina said, are being thoroughly screened as a precautionary measure. Coronavirus, or COVID-19, as you might be aware, has no cure for now. So prevention is the key. And one important preventive measure is social distancing or stay at home has been encouraged by medical experts. Back to you in the studio. Many thanks that are most certainly preventive measures is the sure way and help has begun to come the way of Nigeria as the federal government took delivery of its first COVID-19 medical items from Jack Ma Foundation in China. Emmanuel Ayimiro, who was at the cargo section of the Inam Diazikiwe International Airport, Abuja, tells us about the items. The items lie there in Lagos yesterday and evacuated to Abuja by the Nigerian Air Force C-130. This consignment first uh, landed in Addis, uh, Ethiopia. He sent a whole cargo of uh, aircraft for all the African regions. And our own beat is what we are seeing here. It's about uh, 20,000 uh, test kits. Uh, one, uh, about 2,000 uh, gowns and about 100,000 uh, masks that we are using. If that this virus is imported into the country and everyone coming in has had to pass through Port Health, it underscores the importance of the value of these items because the officers at the port must be kept safe to be able to continue to do their work and keep the rest of Nigeria safe. So that makes it very important and we appreciate these items that have been do, um, donated and it will help us to do our job better and to keep ourselves safe and keep Nigerians safe. We expect that uh, more of such nation uh, should come the way of Nigeria. Are yes. we expecting any? Well, we have uh, last uh, two days we had a course to meet uh, with the, the members of uh, U yes, U yeah, United Nations system. And we, had, we have received several offers, and uh, the tax force is right now com compiling a, a list, which uh, hopefully by the time uh, they come to fruition, they will be made public to the Nigerian people. We want to find out what is the compliance level. Yesterday, uh, the international flight was suspended in Abuja. I want to confirm to you that we have 
met, we provided all enabling environment for the Port Health to operate in Abuja Airport. And by 12 midnight, we are able to close Abuja Airport with the exit of uh, Turkish Air, which uh, departed to Istanbul with about 180 plus three passengers. So the airport is now closed up and all facilities that are in there are also available at the domestic terminal now. So if you go there, you will find people being screened by Port Health at the entrance and, and exit of the airport. So we want to ensure that uh, all will cool to make sure that this thing is checked at the airport. With this time of jigsaw from the Jack Ma Foundation in China and so many other that Nigerian is still expecting, uh, it is expected that in a short time from now, Nigeria will be able to tackle coronavirus pandemic that has been ravaging the country. Thank you, Manuel. Certainly to that. Yes, and on the global scene from coronavirus, the death toll from coronavirus in Spain is now the second highest in the world, exceeding that of China. Just Joyce Ometu is standing by to give us a global update on the pandemic. A quarter of the world's population are now living under lockdown. COVID-19 global cases now exceed 400,000, with deaths approaching 20,000 and more than 100,000 recovered cases. According to the World Health Organization, countries with the highest cases include China, Italy and the United States. And countries that has the highest death toll in the world are Italy, Spain and China. In Africa, COVID-19 cases across the continent are now well above 2,400, with Mali, Libya and Guinea-Bissau announcing their first. 46 of the continent's 54 countries now have the virus. The highly coronavirus-affected African countries include South Africa with 709 cases, Egypt with 402 cases, Algeria with 264 cases and Morocco with 170 cases as of Wednesday. The African Center for Disease Control and Prevention indicated that the countries that have no recorded cases are Sierra Leone, South Sudan, Burundi, Malawi, Botswana, Comoros, Lesotho, and Sao Tome and Principe. The number of deaths due to the pandemic rose to 64 as of early Wednesday, while the number of people who have recovered from the virus has also increased to 203. Let's look at some key developments in other parts of the world. The Prince of Wales has tested positive for coronavirus. Prince Charles, heir to the British throne, is displaying mild symptoms but remains in good health, a spokesman said. Adding that the Duchess of Cornwall, 72, has been tested but does not have the virus. India, a country of some 1.3 billion people, is in complete lockdown. The restrictions came into force at midnight local time and will be enforced for 21 days. The death toll in Spain from the coronavirus has officially surpassed that of China to become the second highest in the world. Reports from Brazil says the country's president, Jair Bolsonaro, has downplayed the threat of the coronavirus, calling on officials to roll back restrictions they have put in place to curb its spread. Meanwhile, the United States President Donald Trump and the Senate have agreed a massive economic relief package worth more than $1.8 trillion. And that's today's edition of Global Updates on COVID-19. We will bring you more as events unfold. I am Joyce Umitu. Many thanks, Joyce, for that update. And back home, the chairman of Nigeria Governors Forum and Ikiti State Governor Kayode Fayemi has tested negative to the coronavirus. The governor, who isolated himself earlier, also advised his colleagues to undergo same. Ayodeji Ogunshaki reports that apart from shutting the markets, the state government has evolved all the measures to check the spread of the virus. 
Since the outbreak of deadly coronavirus in the country and Nikiti State recorded an index case, there has been increased precautionary measures against the spread. The measures evolved by the state government ranges from constitution of different committees and task force to ensure strict implementation and compliance, public enlightenment, shutting of schools, enforcing ban of public, religious and social gathering of more than 20 people among others. We have a congregation of about between 150 and 200 on a normal Sunday. But we had to distribute ourselves to several centers so that we can obey the law. And I've been encouraging to see people that I met. Prevention is better than cure. The Kitty State government also fortified the quarantine center at the Obadi Jube General Hospital where the index case is being treated. At this time, the patient, uh, which is the index case for Kitty State, is stable. Presently, we have partners that have come to the state. The NCDC is here supporting us. The WHO is here supporting us. People have now embraced the use of sanitizers and hand washing, especially government offices and public places, while workers in the state complied with the state at home order, except those on grade level 13 and above. Staffs in the ministry generally are, they are most of them are in their offices now. So, in, uh, in compliance with the government directive. Taking precautionary measures, all our, toy, all our conveniences have soap and running water, so we all do that as well. Government also provided free transportation for students of higher institutions in the state to convey them to their various destinations outside the state. As well as to safeguard them from getting contact of this, and also we are giving them free sanitizer. Respondents will be viewed that if people should follow the precautionary measures, there is open sight of an end to the dreaded disease in Nigeria. From Adwekiti, Ayode Jogishaki, NTA News. Thank you, Ayodeji. Following the number of contacts with a lot of persons during and after the burial of his mother, the Kogi State Governor Yahya Bello and his close aides have embarked on self-isolation for 14 days as part of prescribed measures to curtail the chances of contracting and spreading the COVID-19. A statement by the Chief Press Secretary Onogu Mohamed says, following one of the prominent personalities the Governor had close contact with, who was said to have been tested positive to COVID-19, the Governor and his close aides have not shown any symptoms of the virus and are all in good health condition. Governor Bello called on all citizens to observe social distancing and high-level personal hygiene. The governor prayed and wished those that have tested positive to COVID-19 the almighty Allah's healing balm and speedy recovery. Let's pause for some messages. We'll back to Bezos. Stay tuned. The coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, has been declared by the World Health Organization as a global pandemic. While clinical trials are ongoing for a vaccine and a possible cure, there is no known treatment for the coronavirus. Nigeria has recorded some of these cases and people are advised to take these preventive measures to keep themselves safe and contain the further spread of the virus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water or use hand sanitizers all the time. Maintain social distancing. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Practice respiratory hygiene. If you have fever, cough, and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early. Do not panic. Stop the spread of unconfirmed news. Follow the official government news outlets and report all cases immediately. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa's Thanks for staying tuned. Following the first confirmed case of coronavirus in Ocean State, all major markets will be closed down from this Friday by the government. The state governor, Boyega Oyetola, made this known in Oshogbo while briefing journalists on the latest development and measures in place to contain the disease. Let's hear from Femi Afariogun. In three days, this is the second time Osho State Governor, Boyega Oyetola, will be addressing the media on coronavirus pandemic. The governor who confirmed that the case in Oshun is a returning from United Kingdom and currently receiving medical care noted that contact tracing has also commenced. To further contain the spread, the following measures take immediate effect. All major markets will be shut down with effect from Friday, March 27. However, traders are allowed to sell food items 
in front of their houses. Pharmacies are also exempted from this ban. He appealed to returnees, especially from high-risk countries, to self-isolate and submit themselves to test. And as a way of leading by example, I've also subjected myself to test. My wife, because of our recent travel history, also subjected herself to test. Both came back negative. He confirmed that all the centers have been set up at Ashubiaru State Specialist Hospital, Oshubu. Governor Wego Yitola is calling for calm. He said a tax force has been set up by the state government to man all the state's land borders to examine people entering into Oshun State. In Oshobo, Femi Afariogun, NTA News. And in Umahiat, who was checking the spread of COVID-19 in Abia State, Governor Okeze Kbazu has distributed 70,000 hand sanitizer and 10,800 buckets for hand washing to primary and secondary schools in the state. Chinyere Okoli will tell us more. Governor Bazo, while addressing stakeholders, noted that coronavirus is not a death sentence, but an ailment that requires community efforts to deal with, and urge Iber residents not to panic as the state has taken preventive measures to forestall the dreaded virus. He formally distributed over 70,000 hand sanitizers and 10,800 buckets to all schools and announced the suspension of convocation of one of the universities in the state, as well as immediate closure of the institution and other tertiary institutions in Abia. He promised to provide 10 million naira to all tertiary institutions to continue online lectures while at home. But if your temperature is okay, then um, uh, you are free to go. But if your temperature is okay and you feel that you have exposed yourselves to people who are likely, uh, who may likely infect you, uh, you may also uh, do a test. Iowa State Government has already set up three COVID-19 isolation centers at Amateur General Hospital, Omwaya, Iowa State University Teaching Hospital, Aba, and the Federal Medical Center, Omwaya, as well as Iowa Telehealth Center on a 24-hour dial-a-doctor initiative for any emergency. In Omwaya, Chinyere Okoli, NTA News. The federal government has stopped all train movement across the country with immediate effect. Statement by the managing director of Nigerian Railway Corporation, Fidet Okiria, indicates that the move is part of the precautionary measures to check the spread of coronavirus in the country. The global scale and speed of educational disruption from the coronavirus pandemic is unparalleled going by United Nations projection. This comes as the coronavirus pandemic reached deeper across the world. With a sweep down of all schools in affected countries and has intensified the educational upheaval of nearly 300 million students globally, in Nigeria, pupils and students are out of school and now home with their parents. How are the parents coping? Let's hear from Justin Bem Ongi. This note. We wish to appeal to all schools to please shut down. Just last week, the Nigerian government at all levels gave directives that following concerns about the spread of coronavirus, schools should be closed indefinitely. What this means is that thousands of students from 62 public schools in Abuja alone, not to mention the private ones, are on forced break. More so, that these parents who are mostly workers are also directed to stay at home to observe social distancing. Well, from a public health standpoint, authorities see it that closing schools is a useful measure. From a parenting standpoint, the parents see that it's more likely to be incredibly stressful and challenging. But does it have to be? Hussein Abubakar, an FCT resident, is one of the workers observing the stay-at-home directive with his daughters. For them, the abrupt and unplanned holidays equally gives them time to play together as one family. Oh, definitely. I'm very comfortable with them around. And of course, they are bored. They are asking a lot of questions. Why are they home at this time? Abruptly, they are asked to go back home. 
and uh, we are trying to tell them that look there is a problem on ground all this going out playing around touching things should stop for this other family just next flat Hassana Abubakar with her kids say that they are just fine with staying at home. It has been the perfect time for them to frequently educate and enforce good personal hygiene as well as pray for the healing of the nation and the world. From time to time I mobilize them or I gather them to pray because this is the time for us to pray, to turn back to God. And again, we are conscious about hygiene I, teach it, I, I used to teach them how to sanitize their hands. Education may be disrupted, but that doesn't mean the kids have to lose out. Interactions from these parents have indicated that in trying to engage the kids, it is better to find creative ways to support them during this uncertain and disruptive time or maybe create school at home, or better still, adapt and relish the new found holidays. In Abuja, Justin Bemuni, NT News. And also more room for Bundin, don't you think so? The United Nations flag was at half mass at its headquarters, Abuja, in memory of the UN peacekeepers who lost their lives in a helicopter crash in Sierra Leone in 2004. And all the missing or detained member staff at the Bull of Brooklyn Sunday will give us details. Despite their services towards having a peaceful world, they are equally threatened by the people they are protecting. This is the reason a day is set aside as International Day of Solidarity for their missing and detained staff. It is often said that it is better for a loved one to be dead than be declared missing. Following the experiences of the United Nations over the years that became a threat to security and freedom of members of staff. We double our efforts to ensure that all United Nations staff and associated personnel have the protection they need to carry out their vital work for humankind, said the Secretary General, in a message to mark this day. Some persons living with albinism have also been reported to be missing. Vividly one day that I was in a taxi and uh, the taxi driver was carrying me to an unknown destination and I had to scream. In the foundation, we took that into consideration uh, by ensuring that there is a section in the national policy on albinism that deals with the safety and uh, safety of life and properties of each member of the organization. The first resolution on staff security was adopted by the UN Security Council in September 1993. Adebola. Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. On a sad note, President Muhammadu Buhari has condoled the government and people of Cross River State and National Assembly over passing of the senator representing Cross River North, Rose Okoji Oko. In a statement by the senior special assistant to the president of media and publicity, Garba Shio, says the president believes the senator's historic service to the nation at the National Assembly starting out at House of Representatives and later at the Senate will always be remembered as one of the women, women who championed development issues at the National Assembly, especially on girl child education and health. President Buhari notes with sadness that her voice, intelligence and experience will be sorely missed and the promise of a brighter political career will not be realized. On that sad note, we come to an end to the, of the news. Thank you for your time. I'm Ruth Aguale. Bye.